Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Align Your Mind with Jonathan and Alexa. Thank you everyone for tuning in to this week's podcast. And we also want to thank everyone for attending our virtual summit that we held on August 1st. Um, this virtual summit was very, very successful. We had a great turnout and we enjoyed chatting with you all and interacting with you all. And that summit is still available if you go to mindfulme.org. Uh, the link is posted on our website. So if you didn't get a chance to watch it on the first, you can still watch it now. Yeah, and what Alexa and I wanted to kind of do with this episode is we wanted to let you guys in on how we actually learned quite a bit because Alexa and I did the physical mindfulness masterclass. So we kind of went over with all the D1 athletes on how mindfulness kind of relates to them and how they use it in their everyday life. And I mean, speaking for myself, I definitely learned a lot and we just kind of wanted to let you guys in on that experience and how it can help you guys too. So um, there's a few ways just to do a little recap. We had Kayla Boating from Clemson. We had Callie Cannaval from Harvard. We had Gia Minor from UCF Soccer. And then we had Derek Wingo from the University of Florida. So we might be mentioning their names. That's just a little recap on what they play. Everyone plays football except for Gia Minor of UCF. So Alexa, why don't you start us off? So one thing Jonathan and I noticed was we'd ask the athletes before we film the interview, we'd be like, so like, just tell us, do you practice mindfulness? And they're like, I don't think so. And then they start talking about the things that they do before a game or how they cope with stress or how they organize their day-to-day -day life. And Jonathan and I told them, we're like, this is being mindful. And a lot of people get confused by thinking mindfulness is meditations and it's uh, deep breathing and it's mindful movement. But in reality, anything can be mindful. Anything, taking a deep breath every once in a while is considered to be mindful. And I just thought that that was something that was really interesting that never really crossed their minds. Like, of course, you know, most sports do yoga and whatnot, and that was their version of mindfulness. But once we got into conversation, for example, there's a few examples. I'll give the first one. We were talking to Caleb and we asked him, really, like, Caleb, what do you do before a big game? Like, how do you get ready? Or how do you set aside time for yourself? And he goes, Sometimes I just like to cut off from everyone else and I put in my headphones and I just listen to some music and take some time. And I was like, do you not think that that's mindful? And he's like, I guess I never really thought about it. And that's, you know, that's one example. There's obviously a lot more. Jonathan, you want to get into them? Yeah. So one of these people that we spoke to was Derek Wingo. He went to St. Thomas Aquinas and he was a five-star recruit. And he's now going to University of Florida as a cornerback. And I know he's excited to kind of play and have the opportunity to play at UF. But one of the things he was telling me was um, in the recent years, from his freshman year, they didn't have it. But as he went throughout high school, they kind of invested more into it. And it was yoga. He said at first, um, no one really took it seriously, of course. You know, they were just kind of doing it to do it because the coach said to do it. So they follow the coach's orders. But then all of a sudden they were starting to look forward to it and then they hired more people to kind of facilitate it because they were seeing results. The yoga not only helped them do well academically, but it also increased their ability to do well on the field and having that open mindset. So that was just something cool that I took away from the whole experience is that if big sport teams are investing in it starting at the youth in high school level, then there's definitely some positive things that come away from it. But then again, there's that stigma of the word yoga where people don't even really want to call it yoga sometimes. People call it mindful movements and stuff of that nature. So it's just something to keep in mind. But that was something really cool that I thought uh, St. Thomas practiced. And I know our baseball team at Fort Lauderdale High School practices it as well. Uh, they do yoga and things of that nature. And I know they've seen, uh, they look forward to it as well. And uh, I think more sport teams are starting to do it, which is really cool. Yeah, and on that note um, of <clears throat> schools themselves being mindful, again, something not that wouldn't normally be considered or you wouldn't think would be mindful, that also from Caleb, um, we asked him how he deals with the pressures of, and this is kind of like a spoiler to the summit, so go watch the summit before you watch this and then come back and we'll chat. But um, he, we asked him, how do you deal with the pressures of social media? and 
he got into saying like, you know, stay focused and don't post anything that could come back and bite you. And then he kind of threw it in there and didn't really pay much attention to it. He's like, oh, and we can't use social media in the fall because it's the season and blah, blah, blah. Like he just kept on talking. And my follow-up question was, why don't you use uh, social media in the fall? And he says, Clemson doesn't allow us to use social media because it takes our attention away from the game or it takes our attention away from academics. And I thought that that was really interesting because the school themselves are preparing their players to put their whole attention on academics and a big game or the big games coming up. And I asked him, I said, does that impact your mental health? And he said, actually, like, without even thinking about it, yeah, it does. And I've realized that I'm a lot less stressed when I'm not posting on social media or I'm not seeing everyone else posting on social media just because it's a relief to know that that's one less thing I have to deal with. And especially as a D1 athlete, social media is such a popular way to keep up with your audience and keep up with your fans that it's a, it becomes a stressor. So, you know, knowing that Clemson doesn't allow their players to use social media was interesting to both Jonathan and I. And I. Yeah, I definitely thought that was a really cool part of the interview process was when he mentioned that. I was like, wait a second. I've never actually met someone that put social media on halt and see how uh, that influences them. But one other thing that's pretty cool while I'm staying on the Clemson route is we did see a uh, St. Thomas uh, High School investing in Fort Lauderdale High School, investing in these mindfulness yoga movements and stuff of that nature. But D1 schools are doing it as well. Uh, we are both know, we all know Clemson went to the national champions this year. They won a few chips as well. They made it very far. They were number two, and they're anticipated to be number one, See, deciding how this season pans out. But uh, they hired a whole mindfulness sector of the team, which is pretty interesting. They had uh, sport physicians come in and to go over with the athletes how you can be mindful, how you can meditate and deep breathe. And it was just an entire new thing that I didn't think of when I thought of football. I would never think, oh, okay, these guys are meditating on Saturday. But that's exactly what they did before their big game. I mean, I guess for Friday. Before their big game, which is Saturday in college football, on the Friday, which you think they dedicate to drilling in as many practice runs and drills as you can, no, they practice mindfulness, which is not just something really cool because we always think, oh, how are these players preparing before huge games? They're not necessarily preparing via drills. They're preparing by getting their mind in check. Right, which is also so important. And like you said, that's not something that people take into account. Um, and that's something that a lot of other sports do. Uh, from experience, you know, before a big swim meet, when I used to swim competitively, we'd have to do this thing called dry land. You know, obviously it wasn't our cup of tea because we were used to being in the water and going hard, but – we do yoga for like 30 minutes and before we would go for a hard practice. And it always kind of took me by surprise how much more relaxed I was afterwards. And you can see that for the players when we talk to Caleb about doing uh, yoga and I forgot what he called it. There was a name for the person that came in and helped them, but he was even able to say that it has definitely impacted not only him, but the entirety of the team. And I thought that that was really important and Clemson isn't the only school that does this. Uh, University of Central Florida, where Gia plays soccer, has also gone into meditations and mindfulness and taking some time aside for their players. So from every school we interviewed, we came to the conclusion that they're all focusing on mindfulness, which just goes to show how important it is and how you know everyone's trying to break the stigma, really, and we're just here to help that out. Yeah, something that's really cool and... To me, one of the greatest sport individuals of all time, and he's still playing, is LeBron James. And he's my absolute idol. But one thing I didn't really know until very recently when I started getting really uh, into mindfulness with Mindful Me is that he's an ambassador for mindfulness through this app called Calm. And what that app does is it just provides meditations very similar to as we do on our website. And the service, I didn't think he actually used it. I just thought he advertised for it. But then um, I was watching a pregame that they're having in the bubble, and uh, he was actually doing a meditation in the bubble for uh, this upcoming season. And it was just cool because I didn't think he actually practiced it. 
But if one of the greatest sport players of all time, arguably, is practicing it, then obviously it's a lot of success as well. And I think uh, well, one thing that's really cool that Alexa and I have the opportunity to work on is here in Broward County, our schools are actually piloting a program where we're going to spend the first 10 minutes of every day, or at least 10 minutes sometime throughout the day, to practice mindfulness. And Mindful Me gets to be a big part of that here in our county. And uh, it'll just be kind of cool to implement everything we've learned and try to share it with students. So uh, Alexa, why don't you expand on that a bit? Yeah, so again, go ahead and go on our website and watch the summit. But at the end of the summit, we hosted a Q&A panel with uh, a few of not only the Mindful Me team, but a few of the Broward County administrators and uh, Miss Hillary Brinkworth, who most of you probably know if you're involved with the school board. Uh, she was actually advocating for mindfulness as well. And she was saying how important it is for everyone to be involved and uh, take some time before a big test. And, or even if it's not a big test, just throughout your day. And hearing that come from someone who is obviously high up there within the school system was important to us knowing that this is going to go through the school board and we're going to be part of that and we're going to do whatever we can to work with the school board and provide all the students with uh, not only our podcasts and meditations, but anything that can be available to them on YouTube or on Canvas or on social media uh, that can be implemented into their day-to-day -day lives. So. We're hoping for the best, especially with this online schooling going on. Uh, I know that this is definitely going to take a toll on some people. The stressors are definitely going to be there. And a great way to deal with this while you're sitting in your room or sitting in your house is to pause and take some deep breaths, maybe fit in a meditation every now and then. So it may actually be easier to do this at home with online schooling. So you always have to look at the bright side with stuff like that. Yeah, and one thing that really excites me about this program that they're doing, it doesn't just start with high schools. It's actually starting in elementary schools. So imagine if a kindergartner starts an elementary school and one of the first things they do is practice some sort of mindfulness. Mindfulness is so versatile. It could be something as simple as drawing how you feel on a piece of paper to actually practicing a meditation or just giving time to listen to music as Caleb did. But if you start that in elementary school and then you do it in middle school every day, 10 minutes a day, and then do it every day in high school for 10 minutes a day, suddenly that stigma that Alexa and I talk about quite a lot is going to be destigmatized more and more every year with every new grade level coming in. And that's just something that's really cool. And that's something that I'm really excited about. And one thing that Mindful Me is doing to kind of help streamline this process mm -hmm. is that we're creating a toolbox for Broward County Public Schools and a few other school districts. And what this toolbox does, it'll allow teachers who aren't really comfortable with the situation yet on how to practice mindfulness. And it's gonna give them the resources they need to succeed. For example, we plan on having like our meditations on there. We plan on having activities for teachers to do. And everything's just gonna be in a nice little toolbox almost. And just kind of sharing resources. Other teachers can post on there. and It'll be a really fun way and um, obviously, if you guys want to check it out, just DM us and we'll be able to give you a login information. We're still in the planning process of it, but it should be up before the first day of school down here in Broward, which is uh, next week, Wednesday. It is next week, Wednesday. So that's obviously maybe you want to start doing your mindfulness stuff beforehand and kind of get a head start before the stressful school year starts. Um, but I think that's going to be it for today's podcast. John, do you have anything you want to add? No. Uh, I think what we, Alexa, at least Alexa and I learned, especially during this summit, is we just kept expanding our toolbox and adding more things in it than uh, we previously knew. And as you guys know, every week, mindfulme.org publishes a meditation on Meditation Monday and a podcast on Podcast Thursday. Next week, look forward to a meditation with Daniel Katz and the next episode of Mind Watch with Dan and Thomas. And of course, all of our podcasts and meditations are not only on our website, but you can also find them on Spotify, Google Music, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube, as well as any other place you would normally find podcasts. All you have to do is search Mindful. That's Mindful with two L's, me and a space between mindful and me. Also follow our social media at mindful, same spelling, Inc., mindful me, Inc., on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.
Thank you guys so much for listening to Align Your Mind. Remember, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Align Your Mind with Jonathan and Alexa. Be sure to visit mindfulme.org for videos, meditations, and podcasts just like this. You can also listen to Mindful Me resources on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and Google Podcasts by just searching Mindful Me. Mindful with two L's, space, M-E. We can't wait to see you on there. Be sure to visit our social media at Mindful Me Inc. to stay updated on the latest news and events. I hope you have a great rest of your day.